day on ELN Morning. Finding home, new data shows that some minority students feel like they don't belong. How one man is bringing a viral trend here for the holidays. All that and more. ELN Morning starts right now. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Lynn. And I'm Brian Ray. Latinx and Hispanic students make up 6.4% of the Elon population. A new report documents negative experiences at Elon for those who identify as Latinx or Hispanic. I spoke to some of these students to see if the findings match up with their experience. A new report released this week shows more than half of respondents feel Elon is not welcoming for Latinx and Hispanic students. I've never felt at home at Elon. Latinx and Hispanic Working Group was established in 2017 to make suggestions on how Elon can be a more welcoming place for minority students. 212 students and 159 faculty and staff responded to the survey. 65 of them identify as Latinx. The key findings of the report show less than half say Elon is inclusive, Many Latinx and Hispanic students worry they'll be judged, and only a small fraction are satisfied with Elon's process of bias reporting. Christina Gallegos is a student coordinator at El Centro de Español. She feels she doesn't have much in common with most students on campus. It's, um, it's very hard for me to find people that I relate to because most of the people that come in here are white, and they come from very wealthy families, and that's something that minority students, most of them, we don't shared those same qualities. Elon sophomore Juni Vargas, who's from Nicaragua, was part of the study. To her, the most surprising thing in the report is discrimination from staff and faculty, who she thinks should be more educated on diversity. At the end of the day, like, we're all people, and, like, discrimination doesn't discriminate. Or, like, who are the perpetrators of it? But Elon sophomore Ariana Reyes, who's from Honduras, <laughs> says she has always felt included. Sometimes I feel like Latinx, Hispanic students might come in as a little defensive just because this is a new experience to them and that's completely normal and natural. Um, but by no means the teachers here are like trying to make you feel like n not welcomed or whatever. It's just something sometimes we as minorities make ourselves think that people are going to treat us differently. Despite the findings in the report, Vargas thinks Elon is on the right track. This is obviously a thing that's going to take more than one research or like, it's, it's not going to change overnight, but I feel like Elon is definitely starting to take the necessary steps. And no amount of exclusivity will bring her down. Even though many people will assume other things, like no one is ever going to say anything that will make me feel ashamed of where I come from, of who I am. University officials who worked on the report were unavailable for comment. For more on this story, visit elonnewsnetwork.com. As finals week approaches, students' backpacks might be getting heavier as they head to the library to study. Our Amanda Gibson looks into how these heavy weights could be affecting our bodies. On a typical day, students are packing their bags with textbooks, notebooks, binders, and a laptop as they zip up and walk across campus. Well, how much do you think your backpack's going to weigh? Um, I would honestly just say a couple pounds. I really don't have that much in it. Like 10 pounds. 15 or 16 maybe. 3 pounds? Based on the 15 backpacks we weighed, backpacks were anywhere between 10 and 35 pounds, with the average student carrying almost 17 pounds on their back. While some students were surprised by the weight of their backpack. A lot more than yeah. I was expecting. That's yeah, a workout. Others say they're used to it. Well, I've carried around more, so I think like my body is like just happy that it's not like 30 pounds. But some students do think about it. I usually, when I carry my backpack, I'll carry it like very, very up. Um, so I know that it's definitely doing damage to my back, but I also sometimes just, you know, when I'm walking around, I sometimes just like take it off and just carry it because my back just cannot handle it. Burlington chiropractor Dr. Andy Von Hoek says students should be considering the weight as it will impact their health down the line. The little things that you do all day long, sl slouching in a chair, um, head coming forward like this, that places a tremendous amount of stress on the, the muscles of the neck 
and also of the joints in the upper backs. And while Dr. Van Hoek says lightening your load can help prevent problems, tightening your straps just like this can make all the difference. The higher the backpack, I mean like all the way up at your neck, right? But um, the higher you have it and the more towards your center of balance, it's going to uh, keep yourself a little bit more upright. The lower you have it, the more it's going to kind of make you slouch and kind of move forward. Students walk around campus with a 17 pound backpack week after week. The extended time of this pain can be an issue. Dr. Van Hoek advises getting up once an hour during study periods to break up the negative impacts of slouching. Amanda Gibson, ELN Morning. Dr. Van Hoek recommends easy at-home exercises like stretches and foam rolling to ease any back pain that might be caused by slouching in your backpack. Well, Megan, it really starting is to get colder out. I know. <laughs> Luckily, we have our birthday girl, Samantha Castamento, live under the oaks to tell us if we should expect some snow this weekend. Samantha? Thanks, Brian and Megan. So it's pretty chilly out right now. It's around 33 degrees, so on your way to class, grab a jacket. And we're only looking at a high of around 47 today, so it's still going to stay pretty cold. Now, getting into the Phoenix five-day forecast, we can expect to see pretty cold temperatures, nothing above 49 this weekend. Um, and um, I know you're all looking uh, forward to seeing what's going to be happening with this potential snow on Sunday and Monday. So there's an 80% chance that unfortunately the storm is not, it has not touched land yet. So we can't predict an exact amount yet, but um, you can stay updated with that on our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. And I spoke to the provost's office to see what could potentially happen if um, it does snow a lot um, and we have finals coming up and they told me that the university has not come to a decision yet, but you would be notified via email. So look out for that this weekend. Um, and as I said, check our website at Elon News Network for updates on all the snow. Now, that's all for your Phoenix 5-day forecast. Back to you all in the studio. Thanks, Sam. And we'll find out which one of us is better at decorating cookies after the break. Take a drive 20 minutes off campus towards Graham and you'll find one house a little brighter than the rest. Meet the family that spends all year getting ready for Christmas, and no, it's not Santa and Mrs. Claus. it's the time of year for decorating cookies but before we get decorating let's take a look at how to make these gingerbread men so it's really simple recipe and now we're going to be making some that look like each other we're going to attempt real right, quick here we go okay you, you have is, brown this is, hair yeah, this is the color of your jacket so, so okay here we go this is pretty liquidy <laughs> best job making this i think so I can't guarantee how fabulous this is gonna look. I think we really have to get your tie though. That's a key point. I Here's really your appreciate. hair. <laughs> you know, I've actually never decorated a gingerbread cookie before. This really? Is, yeah, this is all new for me. That's so funny. I'm gonna give you blue pants because we don't have okay. we don't have black. Frosting. We don't have black and white. My pants are a little intricate to copy. <laughs> And I am so sorry. This is not oh, how you, you look. Oh, you need eyes but... too. I'll give you green okay. eyes. <laughs> well, I, I finished first, so I think I win. But I don't know what that counts for with what this cookie looks like. I think I think I got you pretty oh, no. pretty spot on. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll have to try the green whatever that is. I think I got I got your eyes. hair down definitely. Yeah, that's my hair for sure. <laughs> Well, coming up after the break, we'll have a performance by the World Percussion Ensemble. Stay tuned. Back we have Jim Roberts of the World Percussion Ensemble here with us today. Thanks for joining us. So, what kind of music do you all like to play? 
The World Percussion Ensemble plays uh, music from various cultures around the world. What we have here today is uh, from West Africa. So we have West African djembes, we have dundun, we have chekere, and then I'll actually play uh, a thumb piano uh, at the beginning of our uh, full set. Oh, awesome. Is there any like specific region of the world you guys like their music especially? Well, like I said, this particular semester we're focused on West Africa. We have done Cuban-oriented work. We've done br work from Brazil. Uh, we've even combined electronica with, uh, West, with, with Cuban and, and West African music. So we're, we're focused primarily on the cultures from the African diaspora. Awesome. In Africa. And how did you all come together to start playing as a group? This is a class. This is Muse 106G. And um, I should hold this so I can look yeah, at yeah. <laughs> This is Muse 106G, and it meets once a week. Uh, it was star I started this 10 years ago when I realized that Elon did not have a course that was designed to uh, offer the, the type of diversity and, and the rhythms of, of the world. And this is a very big thing in uh, college uh, curriculums around the world now. So we, I wanted to, for us to be able to offer this since uh, this is part of my expertise. All right, Great. awesome. Thanks so much. And before we let you all take it away, that's all the news we have for you today. Thanks for joining us on our last Elon morning of the semester. For all the news you need to know when we're not on the air, follow us on social media at Elon News Network or check out our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. Have a great day, Elon. Take it away.